Welcome everyone. Welcome to the inaugural international class of Electroculture University with our founder Yannick Van Dorn. Uh, today is our first lecture on uh, earth magnetic antennas and cylindrical magnetic antennas. And we're going to run this uh, program for seven weeks with seven different lectures related to electroculture. Thank you Yannick for being here. We're so excited to see you. Thank you Angela and thank you to everybody to be here to participate. Um, I'm very happy to, to, to do this course. So electroculture, the cylindrical magnetic antenna. So I will begin with this uh, technique because it's an easy technique to use. Um, and it's an evolution of uh, a lot of techniques from before, from a hundred years ago, uh, that evaluate to that kind of uh, technique. Huh? Uh, it's like uh, you have the bicycle uh, 150 years ago, and now you have the racing car and uh, and the airplanes. <laughs> and uh, well, here in electroculture, uh, we don't. Uh, we still use also techniques from 100 years ago, but uh, there are also some that evolve to uh, newer and more effective techniques, or more or more practical techniques. Uh, than 100 years ago. We, we don't use the same uh, materials uh, sometimes, or we make it more practical with uh, materials that are available today that were not so available in the past. There is also a huge difference with the past is that uh, labor is today uh, very expensive, but material is less expensive. And in the past, labor was cheap and materials were very expensive <laughs> and so that also make that we think electroculture techniques uh, differently uh, we can use more materials more modern more adapted materials but we cannot use much time to install them so we need to think to techniques that are easy to install and also easy to use at large scale, uh, uh, there are some of you are farmers and want to see how they can use it on large scale. And so we will also uh, see uh, technique by technique what is possible to do and what is not. Huh? Um, yes, so we go. <laughs> how did I begin? Um, I'm around uh, 47 years old and um, I'm from 1976, born in Belgium. And I did uh, studies about uh, engineering and agriculture and biotechnology and tropical agriculture also. Um, I grew up in a little farm. And when I did my studies, I was like, uh, um shaken uh, or uh, yes uh, 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 um, upset about all the chemicals and industrial way of doing agriculture i was i would like to see a more um i would like to see more respectful ways to to farm and and to see how it would be possible to make little farms that are viable uh, um, and um, so I was looking to all kind of alternatives and that's how bit by bit I went I discovered uh, books like the secrets of the soil maybe you know about this book it's really an amazing book with a lot of um, alternative techniques that are useful in in agriculture uh, you have a chapter about round towers, a chapter about uh, sonic bloom and sound waves and how it affects plant growth. You have a chapter about rock powders and basalt and, and how you can how to fertilize your soil differently than with than with uh, uh, classic uh, fertilizers. Uh, the, the, you have also a chapter about um, a compost tea and things like that uh, it's it's really amazing and it's written like 20 30 years ago uh, and even today it's a, it's a really a bible of alternative techniques and this 
opened my mind that it was possible to do agriculture in a different way. And then I saw the, that, that chapter about the influence of music on planning. And music is um, a sound, sound we can hear with our ears. So it's quite easy to understand in a certain way, or it's quite easy to, to measure because we hear the sound. And with electroculture, we don't hear the sound. We, we don't hear the electromagnetic waves. We, we don't feel the magnetic energy. We don't uh, feel the electrical flow between the atmosphere and the earth. So it's more difficult to understand how it could influence plant growth. But with sound, we still have some, uh, some, um, yeah, so, some, uh, some, some keys to understand more easily because we hear it. And so I did some uh, experiments with that. I was the first to do a thesis about the influence of uh, sound frequencies on plant growth uh, at a local university in Ghent in Belgium. And I will show you some some of this uh, 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 as an example, because this brought me to the consciousness that uh, uh, frequencies can have huge impact on plant growth and fertility, uh, even uh, as much as as the importance of water, heat, light, uh, soil uh, for the plants. Uh, also, the the electromagnetic and even sound environment of the plant can have a huge impact as, as much as those other uh, uh, ways. Um, so over time, I began to, to write books too. And now I have my first book, Basalt and Paramagnetism, that came out that will in French, but that will be soon available in English. It's already translated, but we just have to uh, fit uh, to fix certain details and it will be online too. Uh, you have also my thesis that is for the moment in French and in Dutch, influence of variable sound frequencies on plant growth and development uh, made in Ghent at the High School of Ghent and University of Ghent. Um, and uh, I'm making a book with uh, with Angela uh, too about uh, electroculture, like a practical guide to passive electroculture, where that you will get the preprint and PDF uh, very soon uh, uh, before everybody. <laughs> you are you are honored uh, with that course to. We would be very happy to have your feedback also that we can even improve and fix uh, the, the maybe some details uh, before the real uh, print. So we continue. Uh, so here you see those two uh, images from tomato plants in a greenhouse at the University of Ghent. You see on the left, on the bottom, the tomatoes uh, from the control group and on the right on top the tomatoes from the treated group you see a huge difference in growth and it was like around 20 percent difference in growth and the, the the difference in treatment was only six minutes of certain sound frequencies per day after two months so only six minutes and you have already such a huge difference. So it was not just music, uh, not, um, uh, it was not just music like we hear on the radio or something. It was really specific uh, frequencies. Um, it would take too much time to, to, to talk more about this now. It will be for uh, another presentation one day. Uh, but uh, this makes you uh, conscious uh, how powerful can have just a few frequencies on plant growth. When you know, when you uh, begin to learn and, and understand how it works, then it opens up a lot of new possibilities of applications to help to heal plants, to help to grow them, to fertilize, 
uh, uh, so uh, that's an example. Yeah. And this made, yes, open my consciousness about uh, also the electromagnetic waves, because in sound, you, is, you don't have only uh, uh, mechanical vibrations, you have also electromagnetic vibrations. They're, they are not much scientific that know about that, but there are some, um, there are some Asiatic or Chinese, uh, Indian uh, scientific papers where they explain this. And I discovered that through my research uh, uh, on, on the influence of, of music on plant growth, I discovered that that aspect of those electromagnetic waves from uh, sound waves. And then this, uh, this brought me to uh, step by step through electroculture, where we speak only about electromagnetic waves and the effects of magnetic fields and electrical fields and also more subtle energies um, that can be carried by those magnetic, uh, electric and electromagnetic uh, energies. Now, if people would like to know if there is some scientific research, uh, well, uh, you can study uh, weeks and weeks <laughs> on it, you have in that on in in only that book the magnetic pulse of life a geomagnetic effects on terrestrial life of alan cruz uh, he made like summaries of more than 200 research papers about the influence of magnetic and electrical fields on plants and living organisms you have one chapter that uh, uh, speaks only about the influence on plants, another chapter only about the influence of those energies on uh, mushrooms and mycorrhiza. Uh, there is another chapter only about uh, the influence on, uh, on insects. So you, uh, he goes over all the, all the living organisms on Earth and uh, he, he collected all the scientific papers, uh, maybe not all, but uh, a lot, um, uh, uh, on the subject. It's really also an eye-opening book. Uh, uh, when I began uh, 20 years ago, my research, this book didn't exist. And most of those scientific papers even didn't exist. But now we have some uh, scientific uh, uh, research that is really interesting to confirm and to uh, help us to understand how it works. Because a lot of uh, electroculture techniques from the past, when we do it, we see it works, but we don't really understand how it works. <laughs> and so with, with that science, we can uh, begin to try to understand how it works. Uh, and even also, it can help us to improve the techniques uh, with that knowledge. Yeah. There is one article that is really uh, also amazing because it makes a summary of also a lot of other articles. It's magnetic field effects on plant growth development and evolution. And only that article is really re 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 revolutionary in a certain way because in my eyes, because he shows in that articles in that article that when they increase a little bit the earth magnetic field uh, on plant growth on different plants well in most cases the plants will grow better uh, the, the earth magnetic field is around 0.5 gauss uh, strength uh, intensity all around us uh, but it 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 vary it vary it can be 0.45, it can be 0.40, 0.50, 0 0.55 around you, maybe at two meters from you or three feet from you or five feet, it will be like five, ten percent more or less. And and uh, what they did is that they um, they made the relation between the the magnetic field strength and plant growth. So 
of, of different plants, vegetables, crops. And they saw that when uh, they did experiments uh, in science and laboratories where they increased a little bit the average magnetic field of the Earth, uh, they increased it with uh, different systems uh, that are explained in those uh, scientific articles. Well, in most cases, it increased uh, germination rate, it increases uh, nutrient content, it increases uh, plant growth or or the or the rapidity of plants. It increases also the the resistance against pests. Uh, uh, so it's very interesting, very useful also for agriculture. And what they also saw is that when they uh, isolated from the the earth magnetic field to do tests on plants with uh, more weaker magnetic fields, well, then they saw that the plants grow less big or they, they were uh, more, they, they were weaker. So they, they were less resistant against pests and disease and uh, the germination rate uh, went uh, back to. So it's really a proof uh, that uh, the, the earth magnetic field is very important for plant growth because the, the difference was not just a few percent. It was sometimes 10, 20, 30, 50 percent of difference in growth or germination rate. So it's really big differences. And what is also interesting is that the earth magnetic field is a very weak magnetic field. It's not like a magnet uh, that you can buy uh, from a neodymium or re rare earth magnet that are like 10,000 goes or 15,000 goes. No, the magnetic field of the earth, it's only half a goes. So, and you, you have already such huge uh, difference in plant growth. Um, so it's, uh, if, if you want to go more deeper, I advise uh, one of the first articles to read is this one. Uh, you can find it for free uh, on the internet site, or we can put it in our private group, uh, so you you can have access to to that article. Um, so the the magnetic field of the Earth is all around us. It looks weak, but in reality, it's very strong in a way that you have this all around us over thousands and thousands kilometers around planet Earth. That when you have just a magnet, you, you take like a, a ferrite magnet, well, the magnetic field will be only like 20, 30 centimeters or one feet around, and then it stops. So you, you have a, a lit, only a little influence around. But the Earth, it's a very weak in intensity, but it's a, it's a very uh, powerful in um, in the area, and uh, in uh, it 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 has a, a a huge bigger influence all around, and also on plant growth than just an artificial magnet. It's like there is something more in natural magnetism from planet Earth than in uh, just magnets. Uh, in just magnets, if you put just a magnet close to your plant, you will not see much, uh, you will not see uh, much difference in plant growth. Uh, 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 sure, if, if, if the magnet is not well oriented, you will almost not see any difference. Uh, but you, you, we will see that when you use magnets to, to use magnet as an antenna with the earth magnetic field, then it's a whole different picture. Then the plants uh, will grow a lot better because it will then like, like become in resonance with the uh, earth magnetic field and it will help plant growth in that way. Yeah? But we will see that how to do it practically. So that are some extracts from uh, that article. Uh, you see, uh, like for example, in the column on the left, uh, some examples with uh, lower values of the geomagnetic field. GMF is the abbreviation of geomagnetic field. Well, you see, uh, for example, Ara Arabidopsis 
Taliana, little plant, well, uh, with zero magnetic field, delayed flowering and reproductive growth. Uh, Glycine max, it's a kind of flower. Increased seed germ, uh, there was increased seed germination. Uh, that's exceptional because mostly it's less. Uh, but here, Ordium vulgari, it's a kind of uh, beet. You have decrease in fresh weight. Lipidium sativum, the roots negative, negative gravitropism. So the roots grow uh, less to the um, to the bottom. Um, so you have um, like triticum istivum. So it's a kind of of um, of grain, uh, uh, wheat reduction in growth. So uh, for example. Uh, and on the Y, the column, uh, you have like examples like this, you have like 30, 40, 50 in that article. Huh? That's just an extract. Um, uh, you have on the right, you have uh, like the column where they increase the magnetic field. Well, you see beta vulgaris, it's thread beat, increased root and leaf yield, increased chlorophyll content. So that is also interesting is that it's even have a direct influence on the on the chlorophyll content and also on the on the on the metabolism on the of of chlorophyll on really on the on 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 the chemical activity of collecting the uh, the sun rays the the light energy and transform it in chemical energy uh, and this is uh, directly influenced also by the magnetic field, and they explained it in that article. So uh, it opens a huge new domain of of uh, of knowledge and science uh, to understand how this all works. Uh, um, so there are a lot of ex examples, like you see, promotion of germination, increase in root length. Uh, uh, in most cases, it's. Uh, uh it's a it's a more positive influence hmm. so now to see the big picture where we live in our earth uh, environment uh, on electrical point of view uh, so between the the sky the ionosphere and the um, and the soil we have like 100000 to 200000 to, to 300000 volt so it's a huge uh, voltage. So we live in a kind of in an electrical um, in an electrical field in co uh, continuously, and that's why we have uh, uh, um, um, we have uh, 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 phenomenons like uh, thunder and storms and things like that because it's it's uh, it's uh, the way. Uh, that the earth recharges itself and uh, it's a, like uh, an electrical process of discharge and recharging um, and uh, so it, it shows visibly that there is uh, an electrical field between the ionosphere and our or the atmosphere also and uh, and our uh, soil surface and then you have the magnetic field. Uh, at the same time, we live in the magnetic field of the Earth. And like you see on the image on the right, uh, our planet Earth is like a huge magnet with magnetic field lines from, that comes from the geographic South Pole that goes to the geographic North Pole. And in reality, on a magnetic point of view, the, what we call with the compass, the geographic uh, South Pole is in reality a magnetic North Pole. And the energy flows out of the magnetic North Pole and goes to the magnetic South Pole. And uh, that is very important to uh, understand that the energy flows from, from South to North or from the magnetic North to the magnetic South. That is. Uh, uh opposite way of of telling but it's uh it's uh it's uh how science um uh, uh 
define it, how science define it. So uh, you see the image with the uh, flow, uh, the energetic uh, magnetic lines, and that shows you also how the compass will show with uh, the, the red will always show direct to the geographic north or the magnetic south pole. Uh, and that is that will influence a lot how we will install the magnetic antennas because it's directly related with that magnetic field huh, that we want to go in, in resonance with. Uh, in the way to try to increase it locally and uh, capture those beneficial energies uh, for plant growth and soil fertility. Uh, like we see in the first book and scientific papers, it's not only on plant growth that it has a huge influence, it's also on, on, uh, on mycorrhiza in the soil, uh, microorganism. It's in reality all life on Earth is influenced by the magnetic field of the earth and need the magnetic field of the earth. We need that energy to live uh, normally, to uh, grow healthy. Uh, also humans, also animals in, uh, in stables, in barns, uh, they need also the magnetic field. Uh, also the mushrooms uh, in, in their dark uh, grow rooms, uh, they need also the magnetic field. Uh, all living organism on Earth. And so the magnetic field is not just a magnetic field. We live also in a kind of a radio wave uh, bot uh, of, of uh, radio waves. Uh, we, we are surrounded by radio waves. And not only the radio waves uh, uh, generated by um, artificial means by or by uh, by humans no also by our planet earth every time you have a thunder strike somewhere on earth uh, it creates uh, radio waves that will travel all around the earth and that's what we call the schumann waves and uh, the, the schumann resonance it's a low frequency radio waves uh, the most uh, known or common is 7.83 hertz, and you have harmonics like 14.1 hertz, 20.3 hertz, uh, 26.4 hertz, 32.4, and even uh, so, some more. And um, those radio waves are influenced by different things, by the the storms and the thunderstrikes on planet Earth that are uh, almost every second, every uh, continuous on Earth, you have somewhere storms and thunderstrikes. There are a lot around the equator, and the further we go from the equator, the less we have uh, thunderstrikes in most cases. And so it's like uh, it creates like a heartbeat of the Earth. It creates like uh, uh, yes, it's 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 a little bit like our heartbeat. We can listen to the to those radio waves, and this gives an idea of the health of planet Earth in a certain way, <laughs> or 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 the in or the the mood of planet Earth. <laughs> also, uh, if if uh, uh, because uh, those 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 Schumann waves will will variate sometimes in intensity they will be amplified or will be less and sometimes also around the frequency sometimes the frequency will will be a little bit higher or lower and so uh, and this will also influence all plant life and all living organism and how they evolve how they grow how they have energy or not on planet earth there are also more and more science articles about that. I'm I'm um, working on on to make a summary about this. Uh, this will be also um, ah, it's 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 also a, no, a lot of knowledge that that is uh, that that uh, that we discovered the last years in science too uh, about this. It's it's because in the past it was very difficult to measure, even still today the scientific people 
uh, uh, the scientific research are very difficult to measure those Schumann waves because you need special measurement devices that are highly sensitive uh, to it. And with the electromagnetic pollution, it's more and more difficult to measure those uh, Schumann waves. And uh, there we go to the electromagnetic pollution. Well, they discovered that the plants need the Schumann waves to grow healthy and grow uh, normally. And with the electromagnetic pollution, it disturbs like the, the reception or the communication between the Schumann waves and the plants, or even between uh, animals and the Schumann waves. And then uh, it can create a lot of uh, weaknesses and uh, problems and growth also. And uh, maybe uh, it can explain a lot of problems we meet now in agriculture about uh, new diseases that become uh, big problems or uh, some old diseases that were not problems in the past, but that become real problems today. Uh, well, maybe it's because of the plants becoming weaker, uh, because we disturb uh, with uh, or with um, with the electromagnetic pollution, all that uh, all those waves that the plants need. And so, what they discovered also is when you when you will amplify a little bit those natural Schumann waves. Well, then uh, most cases, plants, animals. Uh, become uh, a lot more healthy and grow better. And so it's, uh, it's again, a positive influence. Huh? And so that's also what we try to do with electroculture techniques in different ways. It's to amplify those energies. Huh? Yeah. Now we go uh, to the practical uh, techniques. Huh? Uh, so I, I did a little bit... Uh, overview of the theory and the, and the science behind it and uh, um, yes and, and now we will see uh, how in in the history and today uh, they did um, uh, antennas things that work on those uh, principles here you will see a patent of the one of the pioneers of electroculture, it's Justin Christoflo. He lived, uh, uh, he developed a lot of electroculture between 1920 and 1938. Um, and his one of his first patents is this uh, this kind of antenna that was put on a pole. It's like a big metal uh, piece uh, that uh, finished in a point on the south side um, that is put on a pole on a on a wooden pole and uh, then on the north side is connected with a wire to the soil and with a wire going through the soil a direction north i speak about uh, the geographic uh, north huh? south and north like we speak in, in common language uh, in our usual language um, and um, so his idea was when we read the patent was um, to to collect the the magnetic current of of the earth in the air or or of the earth um of uh, i i want to say the planet earth huh? so but it can be in the air or it can be in the soil uh, in reality the magnetic field goes through everything also through our soil it's it's everywhere even if you put that antenna in the soil it will work as well and that's what uh, justin christoflo did 10 years later he put that kind of antenna directly in the soil. Maybe he was thinking, why I put this on a pole if I can put it in the soil? It will be more easy. <laughs> and so uh, 10 years later, sometimes it takes 10 years to have a, a, a new idea and to change it uh, and to, to become conscious that we can make it more simple. 
and uh, uh, that's uh, mostly the case. Uh, and he was a genius in that way that he made things simple, but with uh, uh, high results, with a lot of results, uh, with uh, really working. And um, it's, it's uh, uh, per personal. Uh, I like it very much, that patent, because uh, uh, you see that in the beginning, he was not looking for the electrical aspect. Uh, he was not looking to collect the electrical energy from the atmosphere. He was more collecting, trying to collect the magnetic energy. And that's why there is just a horizontal uh, bar in iron uh, to collect the, the magnetic energy. Because as soon as you put uh, uh, a metal, um, an iron uh, ferromagnetic uh, metal, so like iron, in the north-south direction, then it will magnetize itself naturally with the magnetic field of the Earth. It will become, by itself, by resonance, it will become magnetized in the same direction of the Earth magnetic field. And it will become like an antenna, and it will become a magnet by itself. So in reality, the whole wire north, that in, is in north-south direction and the, the piece on the pole will become magnetized naturally with the Earth magnetic field. Uh, that we see when you just put a wire in the soil in the Y direction, you will see with a compass after a few weeks that it will be magnetized uh, naturally. It's like when you touch a magnet with a piece of iron, while well, the iron will become magnetized. Uh, um, well, here you don't touch the, uh, a magnet, you touch the magnet of planet Earth. <laughs> uh, it's like you touch the, the magnet of planet Earth. And then it will become magnetized. And uh, what I like very much is that was he, he asked that uh, patent on 6 July, and that's also the birthday of one of my daughters <laughs> but that's just a personal uh, observation but i like those little signs in life and uh, um and so uh so we continue uh and later like you see on that image on the second image um uh ah, so the first image, you see the atmospheric antenna like you had in 1893, or even in 1780s, they speak already about such kind of uh, uh, electrical um, atmospheric antennas to collect the electrical energy from the atmosphere and to communicate with the, with the soil. And Later, you have Justin Christophe Lowe in 1920, where he put just uh, an iron bar north-south direction on the pole. And then some later, like a few years later, the same Justin Christophe Lowe did a similar antenna, but uh, it's like a combination of his first antenna with the iron bar horizontally and the old antennas with uh, wires that uh, point to the sky, uh, uh, like uh, those lighting rods. He, he combined, he combined uh, two techniques. And uh, like the image in the middle, uh, above in the middle. And then some later in the 30s, uh, he did the device you see uh, below on the bottom uh, right. And that's a huge uh, iron uh, piece uh, with also a piece of copper and a piece of um, a piece of uh, zinc um, that he put complete in the soil. Huh? I have one like this. I, I uh, I'm very lucky to be to have been able to find one like this. Uh, it's a whole story how I, I get them. This it, it's a, it's a whole story, but uh, uh, it's really a piece of uh, a piece of history. 
Uh, maybe if you see me, I will show you. So it's this one, you see. It's, re it's really very heavy. It's like uh, a few kilos. I, I will measure it one time. I, I never really measured it, how much kilos it is, but it's really very heavy. You see, it's really a piece of iron, like, um, like uh, with open inside. It's hollow inside. And you have a piece of zinc at one side and piece of copper at the other side, you see. Oh, maybe you see. And so it's very heavy. It's not, if we would like to make this today, it would be very difficult to make uh, and very expensive. Uh, but uh, uh, it's interesting to, uh, to study, uh, to, to help us to understand uh, how he saw electroculture. And this gives me the idea later to make that magnetic antenna that you see on top, uh, uh, on the right. You see, it's like an evolution of the electroculture techniques. So the idea was just uh, to put just magnets that are magnetized already and even uh, if it doesn't touch the magnetic field of the earth, it's already magnetized, but this will, the magnet will help to magnetize the wire more rapidly in the, in the right direction. That, that's the idea behind that I had. And, um, and uh, uh, so it's important to orient it in the right direction. That's very important to make it work because it's not really the magnet that work on itself. It's the magnet as an antenna with a wire that makes it work. If you put it in the, not in the right direction, you will not have any results. So that's a proof that it's not the magnet itself that gives the energy, but the earth magnetic field that gives the energy. It's like you have a radio. If uh, there is no radio emitting, you will not con collect anything with your radio. Uh, so you, you need the radio waves around to, to, to collect the radio waves and to hear some, uh, uh, some music out of the radio. Well, uh, here is the same. If, if you don't have the magnetic field of planet Earth, you cannot collect anything with those antennas. Those antennas doesn't work by themselves. Huh? They, they work with the energy of planet Earth that is sending that energy to those antennas that are like the transformers of the earth magnetic energy through uh, other kind of energy that is useful for the plants and, and, um, and soil life. Here you see the timeline, uh, another way of seeing it with, uh, with um, different kind of antennas that we will speak uh, over the different courses. You see the, the first antenna of Christophe Lowe in around 1920 uh, connected with a wire. And then one or two years later, he, he, he uh, had the idea to put a lot of those antennas in fields. And then it evolved to uh, the, the system around 1933 that is completely um, uh, uh, buried in the soil and uh, where you don't have any more a pole to hold the antenna. No, it's just uh, buried in the soil. So it makes it a lot more easy to install uh, because you don't need uh, those poles anymore. And, uh, and this evolved uh, then later to my antennas. Uh, that it, it makes it even more easy uh, to to make because it's a, a lot less material. It's uh, uh, it's very easy to make and to use and to install. We will see that. So here's some images from uh, Justin Christophe Lowe. Uh, I ah, guess uh, also interesting to know is that b between the two world wars, uh, World War One and World War Two, uh, uh, until 
1925 around, there was uh, some uh, official research about uh, those electroculture techniques in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, in Belgium. Um, and then around uh, the 20s, uh, it was like um, uh, uh, the 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 politics and the and the and the, yes the, the politics changes their mind and the because of the pressure of the of the big companies of uh, fertilize of chemical fertilization and and uh, agro chemistry and uh, agro industry um, to put it away and even to censor those techniques because they probably uh, prefer to sell a lot of uh, chemical fertilizers that they can sell every year. Uh, it's uh, like a consumption. We live in a consumption society where uh, banks and politics, they want to make a turnover every year and they want to make uh, people more dependent. So they, they, they prefer to, to support companies that have temporarily solutions than uh, solutions that hold very long and so electroculture in that in that uh, viewpoint is not so interesting because electroculture you install an antenna to increase fertility and the antenna will hold 10 20 50 years in your field or in your garden you don't need to buy every year a new antenna and uh, with, uh, fertilize, with fertilizers, chemical or even organic fertilizers, you need to buy every year again. So it's a whole uh, other way of organizing society and uh, uh, it creates more dependence too. Uh, and uh, electroculture will create more independence, autonomy. And that's what we are searching for to become more free also. Um, also, if we look at uh, the past, when the first chemical fertilizers came out, it was like magic. You put like a kind of power or, or, or product on your field and everything becomes bigger. Uh, it, it looks like more easy. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and they didn't thought about all the after effects. And that time that was not so a problem uh, or it was not or people were not uh, conscious of that uh, today it's all different picture today uh, everybody is conscious about uh, the the secondary after effects of of uh, uh, chemicals and the problems it can bring and uh, the concern about uh, nature and uh, environment is a lot bigger today so to, to today the picture is well different and today so uh, electroculture began again to be really interesting uh, uh, in, 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 in interesting in that point of view because it brings solutions to all those problems and it's and it shows that we don't need all those uh, chemical fertili uh, fertilizers when you when we know about electroculture uh, so maybe your life will change too, because uh, when you know more about electroculture, you can never say anymore that you didn't know. <laughs> so you, you will see what you can do. And so it will open up a lot of uh, new techniques that you can uh, use in your gardens and farms. Um, on bottom on the picture, you see just a Christophe Lowe with uh, very big uh, leeks, uh, uh, vegetables in his uh, fields. It's an example. You have the book uh, in English that you can download uh, also on internet, or you can find it also, it's re-edited also. Um, on the right, you see machines a machine uh, behind the tractor, how you can install the wires in the fields. Uh, we, we will see that more closely a little bit after. And on the right, on the top, you see uh, how you can install the wires. It's one way of doing it, but we will see that there are different ways you can spread that energy from uh, the antenna to the whole field. Uh. 
even if the field is not oriented north south uh what is important is just to put the wires north south connected to the antenna or to more antennas you you are two ways of doing it you can install one antenna on each wire or you can connect all the wires together in a certain way uh, uh connected to only one antenna and to to spread all over the field uh, there are different ways like this to do here an example in my garden a few years ago now it's already 10 more than 10 years ago now <laughs> uh i did a little test um Left, see the plot of land at uh, the piece of the garden uh, with the magnetic antenna and on the right uh, the control i planted exactly the same to compare you see the eggplants are in front they are a lot bigger on the left the potatoes too they are a lot bigger the tomatoes are growing uh, it was only the beginning um and some other plants but uh, uh, you see a huge difference on the potatoes and the uh, eggplant on this image uh, so this was uh, with just a magnetic antenna and a galvanized iron wire there are even uh, i had even some testimonials uh, sometimes there are huge testimonials like this one with a radish that was as big as a, as a bottle of one liter and a half so it was uh, really very big uh, that was exceptional uh, but uh, the, 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 this kind of, of uh, testimonials are, are not uh, rare with electroculture where you see huge results sometimes here I made some drawings to explain uh, how to install and, and, and yes and, and uh, in relation with the earth magnetic field so on the left you you take a compass as a as a reference so it's important to take the real earth magnetic flow as a ref as a reference so uh, the best tool for it is to use a compass uh, so it, it's just easy a little compass can be sufficient um, and uh, so you just need to measure the magnetic orientation locally uh, on your field or, or garden and then you put the magnet and the magnetic antenna and the wire in the y direction like you see on that image and uh, like you see uh, uh, on that drawing um, the magnetic antenna i show always the magnetic north with red because it's a scientific convention a definition to uh, show always the magnetic uh, north pole uh, with a red uh, dot or with a red color and that's why on a mag on a compass you have the needle one side is red because the red is in reality a magnetic north pole of the needle that will be attracted by the opposite magnetic pole so by a magnetic south pole and like the magnetic south pole is at the geographic uh, north pole it's uh, it will shows you the geographic north uh, what we call in in usual language uh, the, the north pole huh? that is uh, the geographic north pole to be more precise and um, uh, so Maybe it seems complicated what I'm telling, but uh, just look at the compass and just respect that image and uh, everything will be okay and it will go away. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we, we just need to take the, the compass as a reference. Uh, and I showed on the white, uh, the magnetic flow lines around the earth. Um, and um, the how to you put the, the magnetic uh, antenna I, I show a little image uh, in respect to the magnetic flow lines huh? and when you have the earth acts like um, 
like a motor, like an electrical motor in a certain way, because you have the always the uh, the magnetic flow lines, but you have also uh, an electrical current that uh, will uh, go through the earth uh, on on the surface from east to west. Uh, but that's something else, and that's also uh, interesting to know, because this will. Uh, this can lead to the creation of other uh, electroculture techniques that will benefit of those electrical currents, uh, like uh, you have the galvanic battery and and things like that, that we will see later on. Mm -hmm. Here you see two ways of uh, installing. Um, uh, You see two ways of installing uh, the, the magnetic antennas, uh, the wires. So in the classic uh, normal, more used uh, way is uh, the first uh, uh, that I show on the left, where you put uh, the, where you use galvanized steel wire. So it's like normal steel wire you use in, in uh, farming. To make fences and, and uh, um, so it's it's very easy to find. Huh? Uh, you find it almost all over the world. Those steel wires. Uh, why steel wires? Because those are ferromagnetic, and we think it's important that it's uh, ferromagnetic material to conduct those magnetic energies. Now. Maybe there is some mystery, and maybe it will work too with uh, copper or with uh, aluminium or wires. Uh, some some uh, are, are doing some experiments with that. Um, but in theory, it will not work or less because it's not ferromagnetic. But maybe it works too. It's, it's something to explore. But uh, until now, we always used uh, galvanized steel wire uh, because of the ferromagnetism. And we put a magnetic antenna on the south side of the wire. So that's uh, important. And it will create, uh, it will uh, spread that, uh, that magnetic earth energy all along the wire around. It will have around one meter effect on each side, well, one meter or even a little bit more. And that's why we will put one wire in parallel every one meter and a half. You can also put every two meters, for example, but then you will see that the plants will grow a lot better on the wire and in between the two wires, it will be like uh, lower in the fields and if you want a homogeneous uh, effect on the wall field then it's better to put it more closely uh, every one meter and a half or even every one meter is also very good or even closer every 50 centimeters you can put it also it will be not too much huh? you will have even more effect uh, but if you want to think in the cost effective way on a big scale, then you put uh, every one meter 50. Um, it will work on top of the soil and also in the soil. You, so you can bury it in the soil. Normally, you will bury it in the soil until as deep as 50 centimeters. Uh, uh, or between zero and 50 centimeters. Um, or you can put it on top. In a practical point of view, it's uh, better uh, to install it in the soil because then you don't need to, 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 to look at anymore or to look at anymore. It's just installed and then you just grow your, your crops above it and you don't have to look. Now, if you plow, that's a, a, a problem because um, this techniques, it's not really um, uh, adapted when you plow, because if you plow deeply uh, above 50 centimeters, then you will cut the wires and then it will not work anymore. So 
so it's not adapted to all kind of farming, uh, uh, this technique. Uh, uh, so that's good to know. But if you just work your soil superficially, or, or only the topsoil, then uh, then you can easily install that technique, and um, and you have not to worry about anymore, and uh, your your crops will grow a lot better every year. Um, what is also interesting, important to know, is the thickness of the wire. So the best. I would say the thicker the better, but uh, if it's too thick, it will cost also a lot and it will be more difficult to install. So in, in the practical point of view, we put like uh, a thickness of two, of two millimeter square or one millimeter square or one millimeter 50 square. Uh, that's uh, easy. To use because you can uh, uh, you can bury it in rolls like this. It's not expensive and uh, it's easy to use. Uh, the thicker it is, like around two millimeter or two two point five millimeter square, will hold longer in the earth than the one millimeter because if the earth is like very acidic. Or, or things like that, then the, the wire will rust uh, more quickly. It will take a few years, huh? or maybe 10 years or 20 years. But uh, uh, when it's uh, two times thicker, it will hold two times longer. Huh? It will hold a lot longer than when it's uh, a fine wire. So uh, for farms, it can be interesting to, to uh, uh, take care of this because uh, it, it will not be uh, much more expensive to put a, a thicker wire and it will hold a lot uh, longer. The most easy is to install with a machine that will uh, drop the wire in the soil uh, uh, on long distances, you can go 100 meters far or even 200 meters or even until one kilometer. There's not really a limit. If you go really uh, from south to north in a straight line, you can go as far as you want. So if you have big fields and, and you can go uh, far, you can use only one antenna and uh, and uh, and cover a, a huge bigger area if the field is in north south direction or south north direction uh, because then you will need uh, less wires uh, for example um you don't need to put more magnetic antennas because it's a long wire it you can if you want but it's not really needed if you just put one on the south side it will work um the the second option it's uh, like on the right uh, then you can connect different wires together but that is a more difficult option because uh to bury a wire in the south north direction it's quite easy you just need to make a trench south to north or with a machine you you will uh you will uh, bury the wires south to north easily. But uh, to connect uh, at the ends all the wires together uh, uh, under the ground, it's more difficult. Then you need to make another trench in the other side and connect everything. Uh, it will be uh, less expensive in most cases to put uh, one little magnet magnetic antenna on each wire than to uh, do all the work labor to connect all the wires together and also it's more risky because if you if it disconnect somewhere it will maybe uh, work less uh, or not work anymore completely so uh, it's more easy to put a magnetic antenna on each wire than to uh, do like the second option but you can on little scale in a garden for example it's an option that can be also practical huh? uh, um, to connect the different wires together because on a little scale you don't look very much at how much uh, time you will spend in your garden uh, or or how much labor you have to do it's different 
uh, thinking than on large scale uh, in, in farming. Yeah? Um, here, that's uh, incorrect ways to do. If you put the magnetic antenna in the right position, but the wire in other uh, orientations, then it will not work or really less, uh, a lot weaker. So it will almost not work. Uh, for example, like uh, the, the first option or the second option or the third option. Also, if you put like on the second option where you put a magnet in another orientation and a piece of the wire in the white orientation, this will also not work. Uh, or the fourth option where you put a magnet on the north side in place of the south side, this will also not help. Or if you place like on the fifth option, the magnet in the opposite way with the uh, earth magnetic field, then you will have even less, um, less growth. It can easily reduce by 30% the growth if you, uh, if you put the magnet in the wrong direction. Uh, so that's very important to keep in mind and to, uh, to respect the earth magnetic field with the compass, because if you put the magnet in the wrong direction, you will have bad effects. Right? It will even uh, weaken or it will, uh, it, it will disturb the magnetic field then, uh, or the natural magnetic field. And then the plants will grow less. I, I did already the tests. Huh? So I, I, I show you that by experience. Uh, it's like 10 years of experience that I uh, I tried out uh, many ways. And uh, I tell you uh, which way I saw good effects and uh, which way I saw no effects uh, or bad effects. So here it's again a repeating of all what I showed before in one diagram or one picture. So I go over it. That's uh, different ways how you can connect the wires. Uh, that's ways you find also in the book of Justin Christophe Lo. Huh? I made those drawings again uh, to show. Um, so the first on top shows you uh, how to connect the wires uh, to make it work. The second option below on the bottom left uh, here you see that he makes like a bypass like uh, he put a wire from one wire to the other because when you make uh, like uh, uh, a loop uh, it's like uh, then it disconnect the the flow of the energy of the magnetic energy uh, or it will not flow very well so it's better to uh, wrap the wire around uh, uh, like uh, with the bypass to to that the flow of the energy can go through over the the loop and also if you uh, connect the different wires together you can do like on the bottom right like this so you don't need to weld the wires together if they are just in magnetic electrical contact with each other it will work in a certain way yeah. uh, in a good contact, not like with the loop on the bottom, on the left, that will work less. Uh, and the practical, how I make my uh, magnetic antennas. Um, so I had the idea, it was like an intuition, uh, like uh, with, uh, with the knowledge of our past uh, pioneers in electroculture, I make my uh, ID and, and research. And then I had that idea to use, uh, uh, I used before already different kind of magnets and the, the most practical uh, magnets I, uh, I decided and found was uh, those, those, those uh, ring magnets. Uh, and to make a cylinder out of it, uh, like uh, like you see on the image. And why why don't don't we use just one little magnet like this? Well, in theory, it it can work just one magnet, but the problem 
uh, is that uh, when you will put just the one little magnet, it's so little that when you will put it in the soil over time, it will uh, d disorient itself. It will, it will, uh, it will maybe uh, 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 go in another orientation with the earth magnetic field uh, because it's not fixed in the soil, and then uh, it will not work anymore or badly. Uh, and so that's why I decided to put a, a, a row of six magnets uh, to make like a horizontal cylinder. Uh, that that will stay horizontally in the soil and that will uh, have more chance to stay in the good direction uh, when you place it over time that over time it stays in the good direction because you have to understand with time you have the frost you have the heat you have uh, it will uh, uh, the soil moves the stones moves everything moves in the soil even if it doesn't appear like this uh, in reality, it moves a lot, huh? uh, um, and so uh, it's it's better to make it bigger and to be sure it will stay in the right direction, and also to d d bury it d deeply enough, uh, but not too deep, because if you bury it uh, deeper than uh, fifty centimeters, uh, you will have almost no effect anymore on the plants. It's better not to dig it too deeply. Yeah, too uh, So, um, uh, so I, and I, and then that uh, magnetic cylinder, uh, I decided to, um, to put a beeswax around. Uh, why beeswax? It's because, um, the idea is that the magnetic field will go through the beeswax, uh, so the, that magnetic energy will go through the beeswax, and in beeswax you have, it's really a fantastic uh, product in the way that you have a, 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 a multitude of, um, of uh, natural healing molecules uh, uh, from uh, from nature uh, that, that you will find in beeswax. You will find all molecules corresponding with all the molecules you find in uh, essential oils uh, of the flowers that the bees will visit of one beehive. So it will, you will, when you know that in uh, each uh, essential oil like of lavender, you have thousands of different molecules. You cannot explain the power of the essential oil with only one molecule. It's uh, really the combination of those thousands different uh, specific uh, natural molecules that explains the power and all the effect of the essential oil. Well, uh, bees will not visit only one flower, they will visit uh, hundreds of different flowers all around in the in the environment and you will find all those molecules from the flowers from the different plants in the beeswax so beeswax it's really uh, an amazing uh, uh, yes, a, a really an, am uh, an amazing product huh? uh, there, there is no other product with uh, such a powerful mixture of natural molecules it, it doesn't exist on earth it's only in beeswax you find that and why uh, putting beeswax around the magnet well the magnetic field the idea behind it is that the magnetic field will excite the beeswax molecules that will uh, generate their own radiation that will be sanded on the wire and uh, to the plants. And that's in the ID, like uh, George Lakowski, that we will speak uh, longer in another presentation uh, about. Um, the uh, living organism. Uh, or weak, or um, uh, um, yes, or or sick, or diseased. Uh, well, it's uh, he's, he, in his theory. It's because they need some frequencies. It's like they have a lack of certain vibrations. 
And then uh, the idea is to put the living organism in a part of a multitude of a broadband frequency spectrum of a lot of different vibrations from the earth that are, that are healthy. And then the living organism will collect, will uh, come in resonance or will be nourished by those vibrations. And uh, that's the idea like uh, George Lakowski. Uh, had with his um, with his uh, Lakowski antennas, uh, but something different. Uh, but that's the idea I had to combine uh, that knowledge with the uh, knowledge of the magnetic antennas, or with the knowledge of uh, Justin Christophe Flo. And uh, I saw that uh, that it increased, uh, that it uh, yeah, that it improved this technique. And then I also improved it with uh, some other details. But uh, if, if you already just used uh, magnets um, and uh, improved with beeswax, you will already have uh, really very good results. Uh, we will see some results uh, at the end of the presentation. And they are coming. <laughs> um, so we continue. So here you see again an image of the the, the magnetic antenna and uh, and a compass to to show how to install it uh, in relation with the Earth magnetic field. I show also a little tool that is a magnetic pole identifier, because with the magnetic pole identifier, you can also check. It's like it works a little bit like a compass. The magnetic north, the little magnet that you see in the middle of the magnetic pool identifier, well, the little magnet will orient itself close to another magnet and, and the opposite poles will attract each other. And so uh, it needs to be in that uh, way. Uh, uh, so when I deliver my magnetic antennas, I always put um, a magnetic pool identifier with it. And so uh, it's some tool more to help you to check, to put the, the, the magnetic antenna in the right direction on the wire. If you do it like, an, you have to do in the same direction like you see on this picture, and then it's okay. Then it's in the good direction. Here again, uh, an example with uh, my magnetic antenna and uh, somebody with a compass. Uh, close to the wire that shows the direction it need to be. Here again with my daughter, I install uh, an antenna in a, green, in a little greenhouse of a friend. Um, so nice. So when you do it by hand, you just uh, make a trench north-south direction. Um, it, the best is really to try to be the more precise as possible in north-south direction. Uh, if you deviate like by five degree uh, the south-north direction, it will work a lot less good or it will not work anymore at all. So it, it's really important to put it in the right direction. It's like you put a, a bucket you want rainwater. Well, if you put the bucket uh, horizontally or upside down, uh, you will not collect any rainwater. So here too, if you if you put a wire, uh, well, you can see the magnetic flow like uh, like the rain uh, falling from the sky to the earth. Well, here you have a magnetic flow from the south to the north, and we have the wire need to be in the same direction. Hmm. Here are examples in my garden. Here you see on potatoes. There I've put just the wire on, on the top of the soil and, and I had already results. Huh? Uh, you see uh, in the beginning of the experiment on the top left and uh, on, the, on, and on the bottom you see the difference. Uh, they are like uh, 70 centimeters apart, like a little bit more than two feet apart from each other. 
older and uh, there, there was already a huge difference in growth. Here also on sunflowers, uh, that's uh, an experiment everybody can do now. It's the season, uh, we are beginning of May. Uh, if it doesn't freeze anymore, you can uh, very easily install a wire like you see on that image on the right. I just put it on the top soil. Um, I've seeded some sunflowers on the right and a row on the left. On the left, there were only a few sunflowers uh, that germinated or that survived also the, um, the, the, uh, the snails and so on. <laughs> and, uh, and on the right, you have uh, the a lot more sunflowers germinated and they grow a lot bigger than on the left. Uh, so you see huge different, uh, difference uh, in growth with the same soil, same, uh, same, uh, yes, same soil, same moisture, same light, same, uh, fer same uh, uh, fertilization. It's just the wire that is different. Uh, just the uh, electroculture more that makes the difference. Here again, the same picture uh, with an other uh, angle. You see it even better. Here, that it's a, a big, on a big scale, that uh, is a kind of syntropic uh, uh, orchard, uh, wood forest in Brazil. Uh, and he installed a uh, wire in the soil before planting uh, bananas, banana trees and other, and coffee trees and uh, mangoes and uh, all those tropical uh, fruit. And you see on the right, uh, uh, a row of banana trees. Uh, so on the picture on the top, that was the first year after the first year, you see that the banana trees in the back and on the right are a lot bigger than the banana trees on the left. Well, the only difference is that uh, on the right, you have a wire in the soil uh, connected with a magnetic antenna. So that's the only difference. And after uh, three, three to four years, you have the picture on the bottom. And then you see in the middle where the trees are very big, that's under, there you have the wires. And on the sides, on the, uh, you see the wall uh, right side and the wall left side, you see the banana trees a lot more little. Well, you see after three to four years, difference in production and growth of banana trees but uh, in reality of all organic uh, uh, the, the all organic uh, uh, plant production uh, it, it was not only the banana trees it's all the trees all the plants grow bigger and what you see on top of the soil it's also beneath the soil you have a lot more roots a lot more organic uh, uh, organic uh, uh, content, microbiology, uh, earthworms, and whatever you, you can imagine that lives uh, under the soil, it will increase all life around. What is also interesting with that technique, it's that you will increase all life with an inorganic uh, system. It's not like you bring some microorganism to your field or uh, manure or organic uh, compost or no, you bring just kind of magnetic energy that life needs to develop and then life uh, that is already there will uh, explode, uh, will really uh, develop itself even more. Uh, it will expand, it will, uh, it will really uh, grow a lot more. And, uh, 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 and it will create its own organic uh, uh, manure and content and, and, and fertility of the soil. It, it will stimulate all life uh, energy processes. It's like you bring a life energy, yeah? uh, uh, like uh, in the viewpoint of, um, of the research of Willem Reich, for example, where he speaks about organ energy. Well, I see it like this too, when you will bring the good energies, all life will be improved. 
and uh, so we, we are stimulating life we are not stimulating uh, that it's not like in some classic uh, uh, chemical farming that uh, the the soils become more and more dead and uh, less and less life no with electroculture we go in the opposite way uh, the the life in the soil and the fertility will grow every year uh, so it's not that it will loosen fertility every year. It's not that you will need to bring uh, more and more fertilizers every year. No, you 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 will you will uh, uh, increase fertility every year. Uh, so it's it's completely the opposite viewpoint as the classic uh, rules of fertility we learn at school. Huh? Uh, at school we learn. Uh, like in my time of uh, engineering and agriculture, they they learned to me uh, that uh, when you uh, yield a lot on your field, then you need to uh, then it will deplete your soil, and you need to bring again a lot more fertilizers uh, to to increase again uh, uh, the nitrogen and the, and the phosphate and the, and the potassium in your soil to to be able to grow again the year after. Well, with electroculture, it's completely different. You you don't think about depleting your soil. That doesn't exist. That it's uh, that's an old viewpoint. It's it's like thinking that uh, that life is a, is a, like a, a resource that uh, that uh, that uh, disappear uh, or that uh, the soil would disappear no the soil is there the energy can be improved and when when we improve the energy a uh, life will only increase it's as simple as that and how it happens how uh, there are enough nutrients and so things well it happens it's just that we don't really understand with the classic theories how it happens but it happens <laughs> it's as simple as that so continue here another example on brussels sprouts uh you see a huge difference in size uh, that was in a, an example from a garden and uh, my garden <laughs> uh, here on uh, parsley uh, you see on the right the control plot uh, where the parsley is more little. That was a wall field of uh, three hectares, and uh, so three times two acres and a half. Huh? So it's seven acres fifty around. And uh, on the left you see the parsley uh, with uh, magnetic antennas in the fields, huh? and there. Uh, we, we will see the result in measurements. Here you see the, the result in essential oil. There was 35% more essential oil content in the parsley on the electroculture field. Uh, like you see on that um, uh, table from the, 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 uh, the, for, for, from the laboratory. And uh, there was 12.5% more in weight and 17% more in volume. So that is very interesting because uh, we see that in opposite with the uh, chemical fertilization techniques, where when you put more nitrogen, uh, phosphate, and potassium, then you the plants will become bigger, but they will have less nutrients. Uh, it, it's... Uh, uh, it weakens the plants. They become bigger, but uh, more weak. And uh, with electroculture, is the complete opposite. The plants become bigger, but because but because they are healthy and uh, full of energy, uh, they become bigger. They don't bec become bigger because of uh, of um, of pushing it with uh, with drugs that is uh, chemical fertilizers no they become bigger because they are happy to become bigger <laughs> because they they are happy to grow there it's a different approach it's a different uh it's it's uh, it's a different kind of energy too huh? 
And, uh, and, and so we see that even the nutrient content is bigger. So the plant is bigger, but also the, the density, the nutrient content is a lot bigger. So in, in, in totally, you have uh, a lot of advantages. Huh? You have uh, uh, more yield, but also more nutritious yield. Huh? So uh, more concentrated yields. So you will need to eat less of it uh, if it's in for, from your garden uh, uh, or your apples, uh, or you will need uh, maybe after one apple, you, you will have enough uh, nutrients than three apples uh, from uh, chemical farming, for example. So um, now uh, I don't want to oppose organic farming and chemical farming, but it's just to show the effect of electroculture. You can also use electroculture in chemical farming. Uh, that, that farmer from this uh, results was uh, uh, is a farmer that still use some chemicals that I advise to use less uh, naturally. Huh? Um, but um, what was interesting also in his fields is that he didn't have any earthworms anymore in his fields since 20 years of uh, a chemical farming he had since uh, years and years he didn't have any earthworm anymore in his uh, soil so it's dramatic uh, when you know how important uh, earthworms can be uh, to increase fertility of the soil and um, and he was used to that to live without the earthworms and uh, and in the field where he put the magnetic antennas now after three years it's again full of earthworms. He used the same uh, fertilization of uh, of um, of manure and 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 chemicals and whatever and uh, and the same way of working his soil on the control fields and on the field with uh, electroculture. But the earthworm came back in the fields with electroculture. So it's like a life came back in his, in his soil. Uh, his soil was like that. And now uh, life came back. And when they did um, an analysis uh, of uh, the nutrient contents in his soil bit, uh, before uh, planting, uh, they also discovered that there was uh, a lot more residual nutrient content, uh, a lot more resi residual uh, 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 fertilizers content in his soil uh, with electroculture. It's like uh, the soil was not depleted like they would expect after years and years of more production, more yield, they would expect that it will in classic uh, in classic agronomy uh, theories well here it was not the case uh, he every year uh, increased his um, his yields uh, and the quality of his yields and uh, and the soil also uh, was improved in uh, in um, in, uh, in, in in nutrient content huh? in, 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 in soil nutrients or plant nutrients so there was uh, more of nitrogen and uh, phosphate and natural phosphates and potassium and magnesium and uh, all, all what you can imagine good for your plants that plants uh, would need as a nutrient in classic theory. Well, uh, there was more left in the soil than in the soils without electroculture. So that's very interesting. Huh? Here you see the difference in growth of cauliflowers. In the same field where there was the parsley, the, the year after he planted cauliflowers. And you see on the left, the cauliflowers in the field without electroculture and on the right with electroculture. You see huge difference also in the color of the leaves. So it's uh, in the wall field like this. Huh? So the same, they, they had exactly the same soil. Huh? It's, it was all sandy soil uh, at his place. And, uh, uh, and you see a wall difference in growth. So it shows that even if you have 
the same soil, same uh, fertilizers, when you change the energy of the environment, the magnetic energy, like here, just with magnetic antennas, uh, antennas you change the whole growth process, uh, the whole um, way uh, the, the, the plants will grow. So it's as important uh, as uh, water, light, uh, temperature, um, uh, it's, it's really a, 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 a crucial, um, uh, important factor for plant growth, the, the magnetic energy around. Uh, we are not aware of, of it. Uh, we are, and now we are aware of it. Uh, uh, and not now that I, I I show you this, you you become aware of it, uh, and uh, but you see that even if you don't change anything on the material side uh, by uh, bringing fertil fertilizers or or things like this, here you just change on an energetic level, on a magnetic level, the environment, and you see that the plants grow completely different eh? on a huge scale, eh? on a large scale. It's not just in a garden, it's a wall field. Uh, that farmer grows 160 hectares of uh, vegetables, uh, just uh, uh, to, 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 to show you that it can be used on large scale. Eh? Another example with magnetic antennas, but that was with another kind of magnetic antenna that I will show in another presentation, but it's, it's, it was a previous uh, version. Um, and here you see on the corn, uh, that was one of my participants to the workshop uh, a few years ago um, from Italy. Uh, and he had huge results too. And you see on the left, the corn with the magnetic antennas and on the right without. He had 20 tons a hectare of corn compared with the control fields that had normally usually, like you see uh, everywhere here around seven to eight tons a hectare. So it's a whole different um, result. Huh? It's, uh, it's uh, the double. Huh? So. Very interesting. Other example on wheat, here the same. Uh, you, you see the wheat field, the, the grains are a lot bigger, the, 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 uh, everything was bigger and also more nutrient content if, if you would measure it. Yeah. Here, that was in my garden a few years ago, a nice cauliflower and my daughter. <laughs> uh, it was a funny picture um yeah the cauliflower was as big bigger than her head she was really amazed by it like me too i'm still like an, a newbie every year when i see the results i'm like amazed like a child when i see all those plants uh, grow so big it's like a kind of magic huh? it's like it's like really amazing uh, that was my first big experiment in uh, on um, on uh, on cabbages uh, in Alsace in France. Uh, it was at the farm of my um, of of uh, some of my family, uh, the, the the father of my wife, and um, and there I experimented uh, to to help uh, this farmer with uh, my first electroculture antennas. It was in 2008, 2009, uh, 2009. And uh, you see uh, the difference uh, below and above. Huh? Uh, the cauliflowers, uh, the, the, the cabbages, they grow uh, really like uh, uh, two weeks ahead. They grow a lot more faster and a lot bigger at the end too. There were like uh, six to nine kilos each compared to two to three kilos uh, in the control field. In the practical uh, aspect, how you can install on big fields? Uh, well, on big fields, you can uh, uh, make a hole with a machine like I show on the on the top uh, left. 
uh, that hole will be used to put the, 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 the beginning of the wire at the south side and to put the antenna. And, uh, and then you will go with the machine uh, behind the tractor with the rolls of the iron uh, wire. Uh, you will uh, uh, guide uh, this uh, uh, at the back of a kind of teeth uh, that goes in the soil that will uh, uh, push, uh, that will put the wire in the soil. And then you drive just with your tractor to the north, uh, to the end of the field. Uh, as easy as this in practical, uh, you have to drive quite slowly. Uh, um, and to check that everything uh, goes well, but um, it's quite easy to do. Huh? Now, if there are a lot of rocks in the soil, yes, then you, it's also difficult to install, but if it's a good soil, a deep soil, it's easy to install. Huh? Um, so, and then you put like a wire, when you have a big tractor, you can, and if you can put like a, uh, at the same time, two or three rows at a time. Uh, when you have a little tractor, you put one row at a time because you need some ho horsepower to to drive uh, to the, um, the machine uh, through the soil. Uh, but this depends also on the nature of your soil. Uh, if it's easy to go through it or not, uh, uh, but it's quite easy to install, like you see. Uh. Uh, in most cases, the farmers make uh, just adapt one of their machines to make this, to do this, and uh, you don't even need to buy a new machine or something. You just adapt your classic machines you have to work the soil, and you just uh, put a, a roll of wire on it and a kind of tube to guide the wire in the soil and up and you are ready to make it and uh, to do it. Uh, we are already at the end of the presentation. Um, so uh, here you have um, my email. If you have uh, some questions, but the best is to uh, uh, put your questions on the group of the course. Uh, then we can, uh, uh, then I prefer to answer directly to the wall group so everybody uh, a benefit of the answers and the questions. And you have my internet site, electroculturevandoorne.com. Uh, that, that is the most up to date. Um, I'm working on a new internet site uh, that will be available also uh, in the coming uh, weeks uh, and also translated. And you have also my old internet site in English, electroculture and magnetoculture.com. Uh, but on my internet site, the first one, you can also translate it automatically uh, with a button and it's, it's, uh, it works well too. Um, and you have some books I advise to begin with. It's the book of Justin Christophe Lowe, Electroculture. And you have the book of Matteo Tavera, Sacred Mission. And you have the book uh, for the science people, uh, The Magnetic Pulse of Life, Geomagnetic Effects on Terrestrial Life by Alan Cruz. And you have many other books, but so those three are really uh, uh, eye-opening books. Uh, uh, it opens your mind, and uh, it's good to begin with. And you have, and you can find me also on a lot of social media, um, like you see, uh, uh, yeah, Facebook, YouTube, Odyssey, Telegram. Uh, VK, but uh, I'm mostly on YouTube. Huh? Uh, there you you will see the most up to date, and um, and on the private group we are making together. So thank you very much for listening. And now I'm ready for all your questions. Uh, like you see, maybe in the beginning you had one question, and now you have ten questions. I think. <laughs>